What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. I'm gonna be taking a closer look at the Razer phone over the course of the next four videos. Today we're gonna to talk about the 120 hertz display. Is the 120 hertz display just a gimmick? or is it actually amazing? Number two, we're gonna do a camera test. We're gonna match it off against an iPhone 10. Part three will be a speed test versus the Galaxy Note 8. Part four will be my overall concluding thoughts and my summary of the whole thing, and is it worth buying? I'll be posting the rest of the videos all this week. If you wanna check out all four videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. Let's go ahead and hop right into this. I really liked it when I had a chance to test it at CES. Like many of you, I would have heard about this phone through the MKBHD video where he showed off how smooth and responsive it was, but I kind of brushed it off as not that big a deal, like it probably has a terrible camera, 120 frames per second, I mean how many games can you even play at 120 frames per second on a mobile platform? I'm a pretty hardcore gamer, I believe in getting every edge you can possibly get when you're playing a video game. For example, I have this 49 inch ultra wide monitor over here that gives you better wide perspective when you're playing first-person shooters. It's also a 144 hertz display. I've got 1080 Ti's and SLI with an overclocked processor in my desktop. My laptop also has 120 hertz display refresh rate for when I'm playing video games on the go. Also have 120 hertz iPad Pro. So I'm one of those people that can tell at a glance whether a screen is running at 60 frames per second or at over 100 frames per second. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think that a mobile phone's refresh rate would have that much of an impact on the user experience. When I tried the Razer phone at CES, I was just like, holy crap, this changes everything. From opening apps, to closing apps, to swiping up, swiping left, everything is better when it's smoother. It's just an incredible experience. When you're browsing YouTube videos, when you're on Reddit going up and down, when you're opening and closing things, because the screen is constantly running at 120 hertz, it's ramping up the processor, the GPU, all the time. And that is probably the number one reason why I think the Razer phone experience is that much better. So not just the 120 hertz, but because it's always ramped up, it's just constantly better performance. Because this thing has a 4,000 milliamp battery, it has the freedom to keep the GPU and CPU ramped up more to keep running that 120 hertz display. Using the browser, opening new pages, it's all just slightly snappier. I've got the Note 8 here. I've got a phantom high-speed slow motion camera. We're gonna do an ultra slow motion test so we can visually see the difference that the 120 hertz display makes versus the 60 hertz display that the Note 8 has. Here we go. So this is a standing shot of the home screen. Right off the bat, you can see the difference in technology. The Note 8 uses an OLED screen that constantly has refresh lines going up and down. Now, the naked human eye cannot see those refresh lines, but with the Razer phone, you can see there is no refresh lines. It's just a constant backlight from the LCD. First test we're gonna do is open Chrome. We're tapping Chrome at the exact same time on both devices, and Chrome was opened beforehand on both devices, so it is in the local RAM. We'll go ahead and see which one actually opens and fully loads the app first. You can see the Razer phone is actually fully loaded in before the Note 8 is even opening Chrome. Next, we're doing a multi-window test, tapping it at the exact same time. You can see the Razer phone is actually quite a bit more responsive this time. The Note 8 there has the button pressed, but it doesn't actually load for a good long while. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch to YouTube from the multi-window. You can see the Razer phone loads in just a millisecond ahead of the Note 8, but it's almost identical. This is a scrolling responsiveness test. We're gonna be scrolling through the settings and seeing how the displays perform. The main thing to note here is the delay that there is with the Note 8 when you swipe up on both at the same time. It just happens sooner on the Razer phone and you see more detail as the phone is scrolling through the settings. This is gonna be a Reddit swiping test. We've got both home pages identically loaded up, both in Chrome. We're gonna be swiping up and down to see the responsiveness difference. So you can see when we swipe up, that XLB completely disappears on the Razer phone before the Note 8 even starts moving. You can also see that every time the Razer phone updates, it's updating about twice as often as the Note 8, as both web pages are scrolling up completely here, which again, allows you to see what's going on much better with the human eye. It'll be far easier to find what you're looking for as you quickly scroll through things. 
On the Razer phone, it allows you to modify the CPU clock, the resolution you want, and the target frames per second that you want the phone to shoot for. And it worked to help smooth out the frames per second in a game that I love to play called Hearthstone. Most Android devices play Hearthstone pretty choppily. It's not perfect. But when I increased the settings in Game Booster on Hearthstone, it actually significantly ramped up the frames per second, making the game much smoother. Another big advantage of Game Booster is that when you're low on battery, you can down the settings so that you get that extra half hour to an hour of gameplay when you're down to only 30% battery life. Now we're taking a look at modern combat versus, first of all, you can see that the Razer phone is playing the game at a higher frame rate at 45 frames per second versus the Note 8 is playing it only at about 35 frames per second. Now this test is primarily trying to gauge the responsiveness of swiping left and right in modern combat versus to see how well you can control your character with each phone. If you look closely, you can see as I move my finger to the right on both screens, the Razer phone responds more quickly than the Note 8. This is a very minor amount of delay that the Note 8 has, but when you're playing a first person shooter with things jumping around all the time, having that increased response time can make a huge difference when you're trying to track fast moving objects with your finger. Now, many mobile games, as we saw with Modern Combat Versus, can't even play over 60 frames per second. So you say, what difference does the 120 hertz display even make? Well, as we saw in Modern Combat Versus, having a more responsive display can make a difference even when you're dealing with frames per second under 60 hertz. Razer did release a list of games that are capable of going more than 60 frames per second. I'll post a link to it down below. Maybe there's some mobile games that you like to play that are on that list and it'll make a huge difference. Overall, as you saw when comparing the Note 8 and the Razer phone, it's all done more smoothly and more responsively. It just feels like I'm in control of my smartphone on a whole different level. This is revolutionary in my opinion. I want all phones going forward to have this. This is such an amazing feature that it might just outweigh all the cons for the Razer phone. And if you wanna know all of them, I'm gonna be posting my overall opinion on this phone in an upcoming video. One major downside to the 120 hertz frame rate is that you're gonna kill the battery much more quickly than if you were to keep it in the 60 hertz mode. And that's one of the main reasons why Razer upgraded the battery size to 4,000 milliamps in this phone. Overall, I wish that all phones could do the 120 hertz. If not 120, at least 90. 90 is still a noticeable and massive improvement. That said, a lot of games are not gonna be able to hit that 120 frames per second mark that Razer is aiming for. The CPU and GPU just isn't powerful enough in the Razer phone to be able to push out that many frames per second for most games. Is it a gimmick? In some ways, yes, but in real life performance, definitely not. It's a much smoother, much better overall experience than what you're going to get with the average smartphone today. That's it for the breakdown of the 120 hertz display on the Razer phone. I'll be doing a camera test, a speed test, and a detailed review of whether or not I think the Razer phone is worth buying coming in the next few days. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you don't wanna miss out on those videos. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.